Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. It is New Year's Eve, so December 31st, 2020, and I had this idea to do this special reading for each of the zodiac signs for the year of 2021, but it's not just a tarot reading. Um, last year I did the like diving into 2020, and I realized in retrospect that me doing that readings was a sign that 2020 was going to be an unusual year. Um, so hopefully 2021 is better for all of us out there. Um, I have had my Vedic Astrology 2021 um, horoscope readings for each sign um, out for a while. If you haven't checked that out and want to take a look at that to see something maybe a little bit more practical every day, check that out. But this reading, and I think I'm going to call them the, like, what we need to weave together to create our dreams in 2021. It's going to be titled, titled something like that. I haven't figured it out. And that is because of the two decks I'm going to use. Um, so the first deck, I will pull one card from the Weaver's Oracle. And this is sort of like a deck where we get messages from the ancestors, especially the grandmothers. And what I'm going to do, oh, interesting. I just pulled to the page of Sun. What I'm going to do, so there's two pages for each of the cards. What I'm going to do for this reading is to read her yarn. Because these readings are of what yarns do we need to gather up to weave together our dreams for 2021. Sort of like dream weaving, not the dream time dream, dream weaving, but the dream weaving meaning what do we want to create and how are we going to create what we want, okay? Now, what I'm thinking I will do mid-year in 2021 I haven't decided, we'll see how the year goes, uh, the first half of the year goes, is that in the second half, I will read from the same card for each sign, the braid and the cloth sections. But for this, I'm just going to read the yarn. So one card from the Weaver's Oracle, and then from the yarn of Mama Shamana deck, which I used last year for the 2020, like diving into 2020 readings, I'm going to pull, it's a two-part deck, as you can see, it comes in two parts. There are, these are the backs. There are picture cards, and they're called metaphor cards. Um, and then there are saying cards. I won't, I'll just show the back. It's just plain white um, for that. So I'll, it's basically three cards for each sign. And what yarn? It's not going to give you something specific, like you need a new car and you need a new resume or something, you're going to have to take from it what resonates with you. And that's going to give you an important piece for inner work, possibly shadow work, for self-healing, inner healing, for motivation, for inspiration for the year of 2020 so that you can take these yarns that come up for you and weave them into the different aspects of your life to create what you want. So that's my goal with this. We'll see how it turns out. Um, let me know in the comments how these resonate with you because this is sort of an experimental reading as well. Um, oh, and people always ask, you can listen to this based on your Western astrology sun sign. You can also listen to your ascendant and moon to get more pieces of yarn, more different colors of yarn, size of yarn to weave together for the year ahead. So this will be fun. This will be interesting. Let me know how it goes. Thank you for being here and on to the individual readings. Hi, Pisces. Welcome to your dream weaving reading for 2021. We're starting here with the Weaver's Oracle. Let's do one deeper shuffle for you. All right. Pisces, you get number 47, Dusk. Shaman Weaver of Caverns. Okay, set her down. I'll look up her yarn and then I'll put her picture on screen for you while I'm reading. All right, here we go. Dusk, Shaman Weaver of Caverns. She weaves the womb of elders, her yarn. The daughters rarely refer to her by the old name, for her magic was unpredictable and raw. So much strange power might be contained within that name, so they took care to call her Mama or Baron. Her rituals were ancient, 
rich with taboos and secrets, the most intense of those revealed how to enter death symbolically when searching for barren. Womb blood was significant to many of those rituals, and a bleeding daughter would often say, I have now become barren. Winter was coming, and so the daughters carved a totem in her likeness with an incubating belly and tribal scars. They oiled the small totem with sweet tar scraped from pines, then placed it in the cave where they had already laid out sleeping hides upon the ground. The daughters did not speak, nor wash, nor take food as they prepared for the vigil. They would travel to Baron's place together, though each knew when the time came she must cross that threshold quite alone. The silent stone became their shelter and a womb in which to rest the ritually and ritually die. Dark drums measured out the passing hours. Fire kept the daughters safe. Herbs released their primal memories. Oracles summoned intuition and the small carved totem guided their way. Come to mama, the totem growled to the daughters. Come to Baron. Then they painted their faces with black earth and white clay and red ochre so she might recognize them, so she would see that they were traveling next to death. In this way, the daughters went to meet Baron. As they drew nearer to her place, the cave dissolved. Now the daughters drifted into their dreaming while Baron prowled unseen. Sometimes they could feel her press against their bodies. Sometimes she would drum upon their brows or scrape their arms. Gradually, she wrapped their breath and heartbeats deep inside her own. At last, she folded them into her hunting dance, hand to paw, belly to belly, finger to claw, and bone to bone. Her great body shifted under their skin, and she roared until each daughter was entirely filled up with the sound. Then they became as wild as barren and full of furious, unsettling, terrifying songs. They were lost within the wonder, time dissolved inside the vigil, and many days or months passed by while daughters roamed the caverns with Baron. Eventually the dark drums called them to their bodies and they shook death from their souls. Much later, after they left the cave as new life quickened on the land, the daughters still paced the night. Now they had found unfettered spirits and a steadfast courage, how they loved to, how they loved to roar. In this way, Baron's daughters le leaned into the darkness and protected the land until the next winter was approaching and the small totem, totem growled, come to mama, come to Baron. Wow, Pisces. Okay, now let's pull your two cards from the yarn of Mama Shamana deck. We'll start with the picture card and these are metaphor cards, so take them out what you will. I'll hold the picture up. You, uh, you can pause and take a screenshot if you like. That's a very refreshing new life feeling card. Interesting. After dusk. And then your third yarn, the phrase card from the yarn of Mama Shimana deck. She loves spending time knowing. Okay, I'm gonna hold these up together. Again, you can pause and take a screenshot. And I recommend meditating on these, journaling on them, pulling your own cards on them, revisiting them throughout the year. And let me know in the comments below what, what parts of these yarns or what piece of yarn really resonates with you. I'm really curious to see how these readings resonate with everyone out there. Thank you again, Pisces, for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful start to 2021.